warm and pleasant good afternoon. Welcome to Law Seekho's thorough newspaper analysis of 21st August 2023. Starting with the today's agenda, uh, we are covering the editorial section from the Indian Express, which is on criminal law bills. Renaming is needless meddling. Followed by the news update, which includes the national news, international news, important days, awards, and sports, and lastly, the legal news update of the day. Now, coming up to the editorial part, criminal law bills renaming is needless meddling. Now, first we need to understand that what's the issue that we're discussing here today. As from last many days, we are discussing editorial on criminal law amendment bill, but Every day, the intricacies of this particular bill is coming up in the market. This article de deals with the names of the three new bills, which were tabled in Parliament recently to replace the IPC, the CRPC and the Evidence Act. These names are unfamiliar to and unpronounceable by more than half of the country's citizens and an overwhelming majority of its legal practitioners making these bills fails the first test of acceptability. Now, the body of this new bills is in English, but their title being in Hindi goes against the embargo placed by the Article 348 of the Constitution, providing that the authoritative text of all acts passed by parliament or state legislature shall be in the English language. Now, what is the language in the legal regime of all the bills that is coming up today in discussion? We all know how the issue of language was hotly contested and debated in the constituent assembly and resultantly Various provisions were adopted in the Constitution and the Official Languages Act. The legal regime in place provides that English shall remain an official language until resolutions for the discontinuance of English as an official language are adopted by state legislature and by the parliament. Now, language and the people's sentiments behind it. In our linguistically diverse country, language has been the flashpoint for several protests and people's movement. Thus, the emotions and sentiments that people attach to their language must be respected. We know India was divided into states based on linguistic differences. This demonstrates the deep intertwining of language with the identity of states and their residents. Language is an integral part of the culture. An attempt to use Hindi in the names of bills introduced by the union government will be seen as the imposition of the culture of the linguistic majority or linguistic minorities. Now, this is majority tyrannism. Statement by persons in position of power that Hindi must be accepted as the national language soon and the issuance of Hindi only forms in public undertakings such as Indian railways and banks have been flagged repetitively. The original draft of the National Education Policy 2020 contained provision that do protest being seen as an attempt to impose Hindi. Over the past few years, government ministers have made statements linking Hindi to nationhood and the idea of India. The perception is that there is an attempt to privilege India's most spoken regional language over other regional languages. Now, what's the bigger issue here? The issue is not just about language, but about culture, inclusivity, diversity and respect. The only argument to privilege Hindi over other languages of India is that Hindi is spoken by more people. To say we are more in number, so other communities must assimilate into our culture. 
and speak our language is simply majoritarianism and in and and uh, and it is not uh, anti ethical to the constitution now what is the legal viewpoint or legal perspective of this particular scenario so legal position english shall continue to remain an official language until the non hindi speaking states desire so the prerogative to have hindi as the sole official language therefore does not lie with those in the hindi heartland but with those on its margin the constitutional position is also that the text of laws introduced in parliament shall be in english the naming of these bills apart from stoking an old fire is plainly unconstitutional now what are the change the names the plain fact also is that english is the language of the law and of the courts especially the superior courts judges are transferred across the country statute are read in english we follow the common laws gift system giving importance to precedents and these are written and stored in english the law requires utmost precision and clarity in pleadings arguments and judgment indian lawyer and judges have risen magnificently to the occasion with english this is needless meddling and nothing short of provocation now coming up to the national news of the day ministry of youth affairs and sport organizes youth 20 summit in varanasi the four day youth 20 summit 2023 concluded on 20th august 2023 with the unanimous adoption of the y20 communique it was held in varanasi in uttar pradesh from 17 to 20th of this month and was organized by the ministry of youth affairs and sports under the framework of india's g20 presidency the participants deliberated on the five identified themes for the finalization of young 20 communique the themes include future of work industry 4.0 innovation and 21st century skills peace building and reconciliation ushering to an era of no war shared future youth in democracy and governance and climate change and disaster risk reduction after building consists over this theme the y20 communique was signed by the heads of the delegations of g20 countries and was finally adopted so here the one of the important points to learn that ministry of youth and affairs sports were organized in varanasi now coming up to the next national news of the day ugc draft bill guidelines to recognize foreign degrees bars online or distance mode the university grant commission released draft guidelines for recognition of degrees from foreign institution and left out degrees obtained under online or distance education mode now what is the feature of this particular guidelines this guidelines exclude online or distance education degrees and professional qualification in field like medicine and law they cover degrees from foreign institutions offshore campuses and school affiliated with foreign boards to be recognized a student must physically attend a recognized institute in their home country and entry requirements for foreign programs must match those in india equivalence of credits and similarity of courses will be assessed by standing committee and degree from franchise arrangements board board be recognized and offshore campuses must meet accreditation criteria education from foreign board affiliated school is recognized if pursued in a regular mode now the draft guidelines that is that have come up um, 
has the feedback on this particular guidelines is invited till September 16th. Now, Indian Air Force to hold multinational exercise Tarang Shakti next year. The Indian Air Force first ever and largest multilateral air exercise Tarang Shakti has been delayed by a year. Originally scheduled for October or November this year, the exercise is now projected to occur in middle of 2024 due to several participating air forces indicating their inability to participate in the war game this year. The exercise is expected to witness participation of around 12 air forces including that of France, the United Kingdom, Australia, United States and Japan and the focus of the war game will be to improve military cooperation and enhance interpolarity. In April, the Indian Air Force sent four Rafale jets, two C-17 aircrafts and two IL-78 mid-air refuelers for a nearly three-week multinational air exercise at France Monte de Marsan military base. Also, in April, the Air Force of India and US carried out Exercise Scope India in Kalaikunda, Panagraha and Agra. Now, coming up to the next national news of the day, Chess World Cup Grand Master R. Pragnandandha R. Pragnandandha beats Arjun Erigaisi to book semi's birth. Indian Grand Master R. Pragnandha was defeated Arjun Irigesi by 5-4, entering the semi-finals of the FIDE World Cup chess tournament. With this win, the 17-year-old Pragnandha secured a place in the semi-finals against American Fabiano Caruana and almost booked a spot in next year's candidate event. The young chess player from Chennai would be the only other Indian other than five-time world champion Vishnathan Anand to feature in the candidates. Two other Indians, 17-year-old T. Gukesh and Vidit Santosh Gujarati has had crashed out in the quarterfinals, losing to world number one Kalsin and Nijar Abaso respectively. The top three finishers in the tournament qualify for the candidate event in 2024 to determine the challenger to Ting Leren. The next national news of the day, RBI appoints PR Seish Shadri as MD and CEO of South Indian Bank. The Reserve Bank of India approved for the appointment of PR Seish Shadri as Managing Director and the CEO of South Indian Bank for a period of three years with effect from October 1, 2023. A meeting of the Board of Directors of the bank will be conveyed in due course in Telia to approve the appointment of Seshadri. The approval of the shareholders shall be obtained thereafter as per the applicable provisions of the Companies Act 2013 and SEBI listing regulations. He is currently mentoring business both at an operating level as well as a board level at various companies. He has a bachelor degree in electrical engineering from the Delhi College of Engineering and postgraduate diploma in management from Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore. Now, when we are ta talking about the appointing authority, RBI, let us know something about RBI as well. The Reserve Bank of India was established on April 1, 1935 in accordance with the provisions of the Reserve Bank of India Act 1934. The central office was initially set up in Kolkata but was permanently moved to Mumbai in 1937. Though originally privately owned since nationalization in 1949, it is fully owned by Government of India. Now, presently, the Governor of Reserve Bank of India is Shri Shakti Kanta Das. Government launches Flood Watch app for real-time flood updates. The Chairman, the Central Water Commission, 
Shri Kushwinder Gohra has launched an app called Flood Watch, which can forecast the chances of floods a day in advance. The app will collect data from 338 stations to send real-time flood updates across 23 states and UDs. The app aims to use mobile phones to spread flood-related information and even provide forecasts for up to seven days. The app uses advanced technologies such as satellite data analysis, mathematical modeling, real-time monitoring to deliver accurate and timely flood forecasts. The app currently provides updates in English and Hindi but will soon be expanded to other regional languages. This is in-house build app by the Central Water Commission is however yet to connect with flood hit Himachal Pradesh and its services will be available in the state within six months. Now, when we are talking about the Central Water Commission here, let us understand a basic information for Central Water Commission as well. The Central Water Commission is an attached office of the Ministry of Jal Shakti, Department of Water Resources, River Development and Ganga Rejuvenation and it lies the headquarters in New Delhi. Now, the international news of the day, US approves F-16 fighter jets for transfer to Ukraine from Denmark and Netherlands. The United Nations has approved the transfer of F-16 fighter jets for Ukraine from the NATO allies, Netherlands and Denmark. Ukraine has actively sought the US-made fighter F-16 fighter jets to help it counter Russian air superiority. A coalition of 11 countries will start training Ukrainian pilots to fly the F-16 fighter jets later this month in Denmark. NATO members, Denmark and the Netherlands have been leading international efforts to train pilots as well as support staff, maintain aircraft and ultimately enable, enable Ukraine to obtain F-16s for use in its war with Russia. Now, what is NATO that is NATO? North Atlantic Treaty Organization is a military air alliance established by the North Atlantic Treaty, also called as the Washington Treaty. Please, it's very important that NATO is also called as the Washington Treaty in 1949. It was established in the year 1949. There are currently currently 30 member states and, it, and its headquarters are in Brussels, Belgium. NATO's purpose is to safeguard freedom and security of all its members by political and military means. So, it was established in 1949 with a 30 member alliance and it is headquartered in Belgium. Next, international news, Akshay Urja Day. Akshay Urja Day is observed annually on August 20 to raise awareness regarding the importance of renewable energy. The day also coincides uh, with former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi births anniversary. Akshay Urja uh, has a coincidence with the former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi's birth anniversary as well. On Akshay Urja Day 2023, the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy will be organizing a number of events across the country to raise awareness about renewable energy. These events will include seminars, workshops, and cultural program. Now, let us talk about the history of this particular day. The first Indian Akshay Urja Day was observed in 2004 by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy Sources. The first observation was organized in Delhi when a commemorative stamp was released by the then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. Now, Coming up to the legal update of the day, preventive detention, three months limit under Article 22, sub clause 4, sub clause A applies only at initial stage till advisory board's report by the Honorable Supreme Court in the case of 
Paisala Nuka Raju versus Government of Andhra Pradesh. Now, let us understand this particular verdict by the Honorable Supreme Court. Honorable Supreme Court clarified that the three month time limit prescribed by the Article 22 pertains to the period before the advisory board report is obtained. Depending on the board's opinion, the state government, as per Section 12 of the Act, can either confirm the detention order, extend the detention for a maximum 12 months, as outlined in Section 13 of the Act, or release the detainee without a delay. Now, what Article 22 sub clause 4a talks about? It applies at the initial stage of passing of the order of detention by the state government or by an officer and not at the stage subsequent to the report of the advisory board. The court disagreed with the view taken in Cherukuri Mani versus Chief Secretary Government of Andhra Pradesh, which was passed in the year 2015, that if state government aims to detain a person for a maximum duration of 12 months, a preliminary detention order must be issued for three months, followed by at least three extensions based on the interpretation of Article 22 subclause 4A of the Constitution. So it's a very important update when it comes to preventive detention under the Constitution, um, having a significant impact on the provisions of the Constitution. That's all for the today's news update. Keep learning. Thank you.